good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, whoever is watching this on the other side of the screen. Um, got another Blender tutorial for you today, and this one's going to be a bit more exciting. Uh, we're going to be going over a few things here. Now, what are those things? We're going to be going over more hair dynamics, using hair dynamics and trying to create something abstract, something that you could use on a web page or something you could use as a background element for whatever type of project you're having. You could maybe throw some type in front of it, put a layout. It's all up to you. But anyways, so what I have here in my journal is we got, we're going to go over a few steps. One, I'm going to set up the whole setup. Two, I'm going to do like, uh, go into the hair dynamics. I'm going to chop these out. So if you kind of have an understanding of how to set this up, you can just go right into the hair dynamics. Uh, if you want to figure out the animation, jump right into the animation, lighting, same can be said for all that. Um, but that's, that's it. So why keep chatting? Let's just dive in. All right, friends. So here we are back again, uh, rocking it out in Blender. So this is the default file. So first things first, for every project, you're going to go ahead and delete the light, the cube, and all that good stuff. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do first and foremost, which you know I've learned over a few times now, after a few mistakes, is you want to set up your camera kind of angles, you want to set up uh, the base materials, then we start diving into animation and stuff. Makes it easier on ourselves as we continue forward. So, first things first, let's go ahead and we're going to be doing some hair stuff. So let's set up the plane. I personally rotated it on the x-axis a little bit. Uh, let's keep it pretty small. <clears throat> Super simple to be honest. Uh, let's set up the camera. Let's do that little trick I told you about. Setting up the front. Now let's just pull it this way, I guess, for right now. I'm not too sure what side the hair is going to come out on, but hey, we're going to see what's going on. So you can rename things, double click. So we got camera. This is basically kind of it. Let's go ahead and just kind of set up our workspace to get ahead. Uh, I like to kind of cut things out in this threefold kind of layout. So I like to keep one for the shaders and then I leave this one for my camera. Just so I can see what's going on. Let's also set up our camera. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for Instagram. So now we have a bit more of a portrait kind of thing. Let's not play around too much with the. Uh, let's not really play around with pulling it in yet until we have our hair. Let's update some stuff on our render settings here. So our render properties. Turn on ambient occlusion. Turn on bloom. Turn on screen space for factions. And then go into hair. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to, to make some little more. A little more hairy. <laughs> LOL. Film, leave that. Color management, I'm gonna go ahead and make it very high contrast. It's gonna be very pretty. Very, very pretty. I'll kind of just leave that open for you guys. Boom. Just like that, in a few seconds, we have our materials kind of set up. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start playing with hair. Now, for some of you with computers that may struggle a little bit this may be a bit of a pain point but I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping that you'll be all right so I'm gonna go ahead within the particle settings I'm gonna click this little plus icon here I switch it from emitter to hair boom perfect right on the money pick the right side all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna increase the number by 2000 we're gonna leave the hair length I believe we're gonna change it from under the source from not random ordered. And now we're gonna go just double checking some stuff right now. String steps two. We're gonna turn off the emitter. Render, turn off the emitter as well. Materials default. Hair shape to like, I think it was five. Just playing around with some stuff. 
I believe he wants to say to be like five. <coughs> we'll see if I'm right or I'm wrong <laughs> in a few seconds. Uh, everything here, I believe, should be okay. I think the strand steps are five too. <coughs> We're gonna find out very soon. So now you kind of see we have something kind of going here with we got all this hair and it's like what the fuck Michael like why do you have me doing this so what we're gonna add next is a bit of turbulence this is kind of like wind you know you need, we want our hair to kind of move here and then go shift a open up your force field and we're gonna pull in turbulence we're just gonna pull that a little bit right here and if you click shift and play nothing's really going on right like the turbulence when you move it you see it move right what you want to do now is i'm going to introduce you if you've been just watching me i'm going to introduce you now to your first animation so what we're going to do as we have our turbulence selected in our object properties tab i believe we're going to rotate our x axis so we're going to want to rotate it <coughs> from zero to 360 or 720 depends on your liking I'll show you both so you're gonna want to go to your I believe this is called the timeline go to your timeline I'm gonna bring it up for you and on zero you're gonna right click I like to enter a single keyframe keep things kind of neat if you're similar to any program like After Effects or any other animation program essentially the program, if you set one value at a certain time and you set another value at another time, it's going to work its way to that. So let's do 100 and 360. Insert that keyframe. I'm going to go back to the start. Click play. You can see we have a bit of something kind of like moving. Now, <clears throat> if that's not strong enough for you, just multiply by 2, 720 replace and it should be a little more hectic now oh one thing I'm not telling you guys either is with your keyframe selected you right click turn the uh, t -t -t interpolation to linear now we'll get more of like a loop instead of it being like the bezier which is more um, Hmm. This is looking quite interesting so far. Now, I just had to pause because I was like, why is this not working? Um, one of the things I realized, I might have set the hair length to too long. So you see how like subtle it moves? If that's something that you're feeling, I think you could break off here and kind of like mess around with this and jump into the color section. But what we want to do is bring this down to like one or something so now you can kind of see we have a little bit more wavy or something more playful now so let's just hit that right there let's kind of pause um we want to bring in the camera a bit so i'm gonna bring in the perspective to about a hundred uh, we want it to fill our camera we want it to be kind of playful Cool. So now you see we have our animation kind of rolling. <clears throat> now you're wondering, okay, Micah, when I hit this surrender, it's just dark, which is kind of cool in its own way. But we need to set up the colors and make it a little more flashy. So what we're going to do first, make sure our background color is complete dark. And now what we're going to do is there's always the default material kind of made and that's what the hair is using so we're just going to go ahead and do that so we're going to call it hair material now what we want to do here is we want it to glow we want it to be kind of exciting we don't want something boring um not to say one color is boring but you get my gist so hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make this a little bit bigger so we could all kind of see here so what we're going to do first and foremost we're going to get a mix shader in here 
So mix shader takes two shader nodes and it allows you to like kind of combo them. So we're gonna get mix shader, an emission node, and an emission node. Uh, duh, 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 color ramp. I'm gonna color ramp down here. And yeah, kind of see what I'm gonna set up here first and foremost. So these are the two colors that you can kind of choose your thing to be. So we're just gonna throw in some two colors right now and get it started. And then what we're gonna do is create another color ramp right here. And we're gonna connect that to the factor. So what this does, it like will help decide between which value to take more of. And we want that to be a constant change. So let's just leave that for right now. Then we're gonna grab in some hair dynamics. Hair info, my fault. Connect the random to this. Connect the random to this color up. And now you can see we have a bit of like this random kind of like color playing. If you move it here and there, you get more of this color, more of that color. If you want to add a third color, you can. I brought the roughness down. I brought a little bit of metallic into my playing ground just to make it a little more like, whoa, what's going on? You could cut that. Let's cut that for now, actually. Now. You can kind of play with it. It's all to your liking, right? So, wow, that's kind of cool. It's just like one color kind of moving around. But I want to get both the colors kind of in there. And let's up the emission by like five, uh, two. We want it to be kind of like, whoa, what's going on? So now you can kind of see if we go to our camera again. Let's just make sure that you can see a bit of the background or you kind of see what we have going on. Um, we're going to add two sets of lights as well on the bottom and on the top of our like hair dynamics. And this is going to give a nice little accent light kind of thing here. So I'm going to go down, make an area light. Let's just like, kind of balance this out. We got area light right here. Yeah, bring it up a little bit, rotate it on the x-axis, duplicate that by shift D, rotate it on the x-axis as well, we want it to point into the light, think of like, you have some party, uh, I don't know what you would even call them, they're like party, uh, I don't want to say shingles, but it's like these things, and, and they're flowing through the wind, and you're going to like point a light going through them, and what that'll do is kind of give this a nice little effect. So right now we have this like blue pink kind of layout. So let's just go ahead and add uh, a little bit of a bright blue. We can take 20, take this, uh, I like a dark purple, maybe, I don't know. And then if you click play, there's that. Hmm. You can just play with colors too. You can see we're getting a little bit, which is playful. You bring it a little bit. Oops, bring it a little bit closer. Mm, I think this is cool for now. So now, honestly, we kind of have the final pieces of this puzzle. Now what we're going to need to do last, which I think adds a little bit of flair to it all. I'm going to go back to our camera and we're going to play with depth of field. Now this is kind of something that you're going to have to eyeball. So once you turn on depth of field, you can see, oh man, it's looking totally blurry. Hey, if that's the kind of effect you want, which I think is cool, right? Like on a layout, you might want it to be a little bit more like blurry. You could make it, you can make it like this. Now you have like this total different thing going on. Like, that's the thing about Blender, my friend. When you're just playing with these dials, just feel free to like mess around. If you mess around with it, like you never know what you might unlock. Like this is a cool effect in its own. Um, but let's go ahead and just kind of 
if you hold shift down you can kind of like scrub it a little bit nice we want to get the tops of the hair but we don't want all of it you know Bow. I think right there is cool. What we can also do is go back to our turbulence. We can up the strength. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Make it even like 0.5. Now I think we have something. I kind of dig it. Um, okay, so let's get over to the render settings and let me teach you how to package this up and send it out the door to your client or yourself or your Instagram post, whatever you want to mess around with this in. So let's head back over here to our trusty dusty scene uh, settings and output. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, set it to whatever folder you want this to head to and say finished. okay once you have that you want to set the file format to the ffmpeg video open up your encoding if you want as mp4 which personally i like that uh i want to do professionally lossless like i want this to come out looking nice you don't want this to look blurry or something like that and once you have where you're going to set it and all these settings set up, you should be pretty much good. There's like level of post processing and stuff if you guys are into that. Uh, but that's where I'm going to cap this for right now. And um, I'll probably make another tutorial later on if, if anyone's interested in how to bring something like this into a layout. How do you want to bring a Blender file into a piece of UI? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, and Thanks again. I hope you have a great one.